This is the M6411 G3 iBook, 366 megahertz Firewire model. I found this on the side of the road. I understand why. It's beat. We're missing keys. We got this floppy thing down here. Missing a cover to the CD-ROM drive. This iBook has seen better days. And I'm going to be honest with you. We're not going to get it perfect. But we're going to get it usable and better than what it was. Stay tuned. Cosmetically, the exterior of the iBook is pretty good. Other than the missing Apple jewel, the plastics have no major cuts or wear. The CD drive works, but is missing the bezel, so it doesn't really blend into the case. I don't think I could find this part alone, and I don't have a donor machine right now. On the bottom, the rubber bumper is stretched and it's pulled away from where it mounts onto the shell. I think I can try to heat this up and force it back into place, but it's not really a deal breaker for me. Thankfully, the screen is perfect. There's no marks or really anything on it. It is bright and vibrant for its age. I am missing the N, 0, and F11 keys. I couldn't find a replacement keyboard, but I'll be mainly using this with a USB keyboard and mouse, so I'm not too concerned about this. Surprisingly, the yo-yo adapter was on the side of the road as well. It, it all tests okay. I, I really like the design language for really an otherwise boring power adapter. Currently, the 10 gigabyte hard drive is running Mac OS X 10.2.8 on a 363 megahertz power PC G3 with 192 megabytes of RAM. And here are the parts I'll be using to upgrade this machine. 128 gigabyte MSATA SSD, a 512 megabyte stick of RAM, an Apple Jewel I found on Etsy and probably paid way too much for, and of course the MSATA to IDE adapter. I have affiliate links for some of these in the description below. These MSATA adapters are really slick. They come with all the hardware you need, all the screws, just screw it in, install it to the computer, and you're ready to go. The clamshell iBooks are probably some of the most unintuitive laptops to repair. Highly, highly recommend that if you're going to upgrade any part of this machine other than the RAM, use an iFixit guide or find one of the official Apple teardown guides. You have to completely strip the entire machine if you want to get down to the hard drive. And this is not a how-to video how to do this. There are guides out there that can explain it way better than me, but I just want to emphasize that this isn't a teardown for the faint of heart. You are literally taking the screen off every single component. All you're going to be left with is the bottom of the machine and the motherboard. There's a lot of screws you can lose. There's a lot of connectors you can break in this teardown. Be really organized, take your time, and follow the repair guide. Once the hard drive is removed, take out the motherboard. That way we can replace the four thermal pads on the bottom. This is just gonna help with thermals overall for this laptop. Additionally, we're also going to replace this super capacitor. I'll have a link in the description below where I got mine. Just to make sure I get the thermal pads approximately where the original ones were, I just like to mark the corners for each pad. This way I can cut and measure the new ones and then put them down and feel pretty confident that they're exactly where they need to be. The super capacitor replacement is pretty straightforward. It's a through hole soldering job remove the old solder, and replace the capacitor. It's a good thing I did get to this. I did start to notice some leakage on this capacitor. If this would have went much longer, I could have actually had serious damage to the board. Once we get the new SSD into its bracket, we can finally reassemble the entire laptop. Really recommend using your guide, either iFixit or the official Apple teardown guide and just reversing the steps. This is not something that you want to do from memory. I'm really happy I was able to find a replacement Apple Jewel 
without it there, the laptop just didn't look complete. I'm using the macOS 9.2.2 Universal Installer for macOS9libs.com. I'll have a link in the description below. I generally find that for most uses, this installer works 99% of the time for the vast majority of machines that you'd run Mac OS 9 on it. Personally, OS 9 is my favorite. Uh, it's a really easy installer, it comes with a lot of utilities, it makes this process easy and fairly pain free. Well, if you don't look at the keyboard or the CD-ROM drive, it actually looks really good. This came out really great. I was able to fix the rubber bezel around the bottom, did some heat and some glue on it, but it did crack, so there was a little gap in it, but you're not going to notice it. We're running OS 9.2.2 with 576 megabytes of RAM and 120 gigabyte hard drive, so plenty of room for all kinds of games and applications that I need in a classic OS environment. The only issue, and again, I'm not gonna complain because I'm not too picky about keyboard on this, the spacebar doesn't work. But like I said, I'm gonna be using an external keyboard with this most of the time, but it's still annoying and it's more motivation to try to find a replacement keyboard for this model. Well, that's gonna wrap this video up. Uh, really happy with how this turned out. Like I said, not perfect, but it looks really good sitting next to this iMac. I did a restoration video of this iMac and I'll have a link in the description below. That was a lot of fun and I'm glad I can have these two together operating and doing some work for me once again. That's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you like what we're doing here at RTOD, tell your friends, hit that like button, hit the bell, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.